Welcome back. Uh, speaking about decent life and inaugurating the new uh, Minya Governorate and the uh, amazing, inspiring projects that took place by Decent Life Initiatives and were attended by the President and inaugurated. The President was received warmly by people in Upper Egypt and especially in Al-Mahsara village. And today we're going to be talking about all these developments, mega projects that took place and all the uh, 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 very uh, uh, inspiring uh, atmosphere that took place. We're very delighted to be uh, joined uh, over the phone uh, live by Dr. Marianne Gerges, journalist. Good morning, Dr. Gerges. Uh, good morning. How are you doing? Thank you. Uh, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, uh, the Decent Life Initiative and the civil society at large. We, in particular, talk about uh, Decent Life and inaugurating the Minya the new Minya governorate and in Masara village we've seen a lot of projects and uh, a lot of uh, new inspiring ideas by that very strong and successful initiative Decent Life and it was inaugurated by the president. Talk to us yeah. about it. Yes, let me tell you in the very beginning that Egypt is very keen on developing the Upper Egypt as the state has put the development of Upper Egypt at top of its priorities since 2014. Uh, actually, there are lots of aims for Decent Life Initiative, like improving the quality of life for Egyptian citizens in the Upper Egypt by implementing many several developmental projects. And actually, the Egyptian state drew a comprehensive comprehensive plan to develop the Upper Egypt in order to remedy the all the historic marginalization and the poor service that uh, the, the, the Egyptians or the citizens in Upper Egypt were suffering for. Also to raise the standard of living on the citizen and maximize the use of the natural resources like the drinking, improving the drinking water, the housing, and which this reflects positively on the sustainable development and the Egyptian economy. Let me tell you that decent life was praised by the UN and uh, the UN said that it provided many job opportunities so far by the supporting the medium and small enterprises. And as we know, of course, it was launched at the first stage of uh, Decent Life in 2019 as one of the directives of President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Right. Uh, talking about the projects that were taken, there were very inspiring projects like the, the Decent Life Library, uh, like the hospitals that were inaugurated, and also uh, what was very also that drew the attention of uh, the media outlets, the uh, uh, reception of uh, the people in Upper Egypt to President Abdel Fattah Sisi. He made several important uh, uh, statements uh, during this visit. Talk to us about it. Yes, of course, as I told you, that the Decent Life Initiative is built in four pillars, the increasing the life standard of the citizens in Upper Egypt, investing in the human capital or the human resources, which is a very important message that President of the Fatah Sisi was very keen to, to, to deliver to the whole world, that we are investing in the human resources in Egypt. We are developing the infrastructure, not only on the services or the main uh, uh, pillars of the Decent Life, but also on the human resources, which is a very treasure in Egypt, also the economic development. Uh, let me tell you also that the Decent Life Initiative uh, is built or, or divided into three or four stages. The first phase, when it was launched in January 19, it targeted the 175 villages, while the second phase involved many more, much more villages that reaches 1,500 1, villages. Actually, here we are talking about 5 million people and changing the lives of many people in our upper Egypt with total projects that increase for 13 billion Egyptian pounds. Right. Uh, how important is uh, the uh, uh, voluntary work when it comes to civil society? Of course, as we all know, that President Abdel Fattah Sisi have uh, uh, dedicated a whole year to the civil society and he said it in words he said this is a year of civil society where volunteers will be able to impact inspirational ideas and projects that are going to share in the massive developmental plan uh, that is affected by the government so we have collateral work between the government and civil society how important is volunteering in civil society and dedicating your time and effort in development projects? 
Yes, of course, decent life is shared by the governmental sector, the private sector, and many non-governmental associations or the civil, uh, the civil uh, the society. Uh, also, let me tell you that this share or this collateral work and this cooperation is reflecting very good, and we are seeing many volunteers from the youth that's sharing the Decent Life Initiative, and which is reflecting very well on the uh, the fruits of the decent life initiative empowering women empowering the people with special needs especially also empowering women economically especially the the breadwinners and the divorced training them and giving them the opportunities to share in the medium and small and uh, the micro enterprises as i told you this is the very uh, core of the human resources development and economic development as uh, prime minister uh, uh, Mustafa Madbouli, Dr. Mustafa Madbouli said the decent life targets three pillars or three targets, the economic development, the human resources development, and the place development, which will, of course, increase the GDP, the production, and increase the exported goods, the Egyptian exported goods in Egypt. Right. Uh, also, among the important statements that were made by President Abdel Fattah Sisi is that uh, the uh, military confrontation between Russia and Ukraine have affected great economic crisis worldwide that prevailed, and Egypt is suffering the least. Um, we have, uh, uh, I mean, observed economic crisis in, uh, in the UK, the United Kingdom, in the United States, and in France, and in other countries, even in Germany. So, uh, talking about uh, the economic crisis, which some opposition are trying to convince the people that there is a huge economic crisis in Egypt, which is not true. Uh, uh, he talked about raising the pensions and raising the salaries for the uh, government citizens. And he said that uh, the government is working very hard to be able to alleviate the burdens through the um, uh, outlets that are uh, uh, mean produced by Decent Life Initiative by the Ministry of Interior, I mean, especially through the month of Ramadan. If you'd like to yes. elaborate. Yes, of course, this is a huge economical crisis on all over the world, not uh, especially in Egypt, and we are seeing the inflation percentages in all the, the big countries, as you said, in UK and the United States, and everywhere we can see the inflation and the economic percentages are increasing all over the world, which is not only present in Egypt. But in Egypt, we are trying to face this economic crisis. We are trying to face the inflation by development, by making the mega, the mega project and attracting the investors to invest in Egypt by uh, making the good atmosphere for those investors. Also investing in the main services like the higher education, like the housing, like uh, the chemical and energy and localization of the food industry, which is very important to achieve the self-sufficient from the food and from the grains. Because, of course, after the Ukrainian and the Russian war, we saw how the grains and how many supplements, which is very, even from the COVID era and the COVID-19 era, we, we can see uh, how many countries were very, were running low from these supplements. So achieving the self-sufficiency and localization of this industries like the chemical energy, food, pharmaceuticals, materials, textiles, we are seeing that the government and the Egyptian government is helping and is supporting the investor and is supporting the localization of these industries, the, like the golden license that the President Abdel Fattah Sisi and Prime Minister said about, and they are granting them to the investors and to the national uh, localization of industries. Right. Also, the president have inaugurated uh, uh, another sector of STEM schools in Upper Egypt, which is very important. Talk to us about it. Yes, of course, uh, the education is a very important file that, the, that Egypt is very keen to improve, uh, even in Upper Egypt and in all our villages, like the, the Japanian uh, uh, schools, also in the higher education and many schools all over Egypt, and we are trying to change the mentality of we are trying to change the system of the education, the basic education and the higher education. Also, President Abdel Fattah Sisi many times uh, was very keen to, uh, 
to, to say or to, to mention many things in higher education and the scientific research, which is very important now to change the scientific research. And as you know, the scientific research and higher education is very dependent on uh, the, the funding and the system of the scientific research. Right. Also, uh, uh, speaking about industrial complexes, uh, there were industrial complexes that were inaugurated in Al-Mazara village. Uh, uh, he, the president also mentioned in his statements that the uh, military confrontation and the um, uh, uh, military conflicts worldwide and the uh, conflict of interest um, worldwide between different countries are affecting in some economic crisis. And that have... Uh, widely uh, being reflected over uh, the food security and other uh, types of crisis. The food security is prevailing, of course, and that's why uh, the, the president and the Egyptian administration and the government is keen on establishing a foundation of food industry uh, to secure the food needs uh, for the citizens and the nation. Talk to us about the government's efforts uh, in this particular domain? Yes, as I told you, it's enough for us to be a consuming society and we need to be a producing society, especially in these hard times and the very hard times that the, the whole world is facing and difficulty to obtain even in the supply chains and obtaining the grains. So uh, Egypt was very keen to, uh, to achieve the security in the food security and the energy security, which is very important. And I always say that this is the safe triangle for any citizen, the food security, the water security, and the energy security. Uh, as we saw uh, in uh, the inauguration of Al Maasara, which is the very typical village and the first typical village in Egypt that the Decent Life Initiative achieved 100% of all its projects in Al Maasara, uh, we saw that the Egyptian government was targeting the infrastructure, the housing, the clean water, sanitation, health, education, youth centers and only and also the optical fibers for internet which is a very important in decreasing the developmental gap between the villages and between the new uh, new citizens uh, cities like the 24 new cities uh, for securing the uh, the the food i think egypt is increasing its production increasing the agricultural area which is very important for in the villages and in the upper Egypt, we can get benefit from all the, the, the agricultural land that's not used. That is not used? Yes. Right. How important is uh, uh, those particular uh, projects in um, securing uh, the job opportunities for youth, job opportunities uh, for women and for people of low income brackets to uh, alleviate uh, their livelihoods and their living uh, standards, especially that uh, there are uh, infrastructural projects affected uh, all the way to Upper Egypt and all over Egypt. There is industries uh, that is affected. There are, there are energy projects that have also been inaugurated, of course, and we would like to, we would have a whole episode to talk about it. So the importance of creating such jobs not only lies in the fact that these, job, these uh, projects are affected, but also creating job opportunities to citizens. Yeah. Yes, of course. As we all say that Egypt uh, is responsible for, uh, 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 for one million uh, job opportunities, obliged to uh, one job opportunities every year because of the increase in the Egyptians uh, every year. And for, as I said, to the, the, the president of the Fatah Sisi is very keen to... Uh, to make one one million job opportunities, and in many in many sectors and in many fields, for example, we can say in the the success of Decent Life Initiative that it offered many job opportunities. For example, in the field of electricity, by implementing projects for more than 24 billion Egyptian pounds, including the distributing building transformers, median low voltage poles, raising the efficiency of the transformers, and also it offered many jobs in education sector which helped many women and many breadwinners and in developing even in the children's characters and and offering many job opportunities for the youth every year right uh, 
Upper Egypt in particular is one of the most strategic uh, parts uh, of Egypt, and it could also be one of the most success, successes w when we are applying an economic reform plan or a developmental uh, project or something. Talk to us about the importance of Upper Egypt on the map and how important is it to start with Upper Egypt to develop society in Egypt. Of course, Upper Egypt is very rich with many agricultural areas, with many areas for making industrial complex. Uh, it's a very good media to, uh, to have the, even the natural resources and the very clean natural resources for the, the cleanable energy and renewable energy. Let me tell you that I can see that Upper Egypt can be, many projects can be carried out in the Upper Egypt. And to receive the escaping investments from Europe, we cannot deny that during this hard time, in the Ukrainian-Russian war that many uh, industries faced many uh, challenges in Europe and this investment may, may be shut down in Europe. So we can uh, receive this small investment from the small and the micro and the medium uh, enterprises. And I think investing and the industry is the only hope to get out of this economic drop or the economic crisis. Mm, right. So uh, also talking about uh, uh, those uh, particular uh, 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 projects that were taken and the future projects also, from your own points of view, what are the major needs uh, for parts like Upper Egypt and Al Mahsara village, for example? We have overcome, we've overcame, uh, uh, I mean, those challenges in Upper Egypt, but we still have many more, like Al Mahsara village. So talk to us about... Uh, the different needs of people that uh, initiatives like Decent Life meet every day. I mean, there are needs for uh, people like that. So talk to us about the different needs and the different challenges that are posed, still posed for uh, um, Decent Life and other, um, I mean, similar initiatives. Yes, I think uh, the Decent Life Initiative is aiming or is tar targeting all the villages uh, across Upper Egypt to be like Al Masara. As I told you, it's the typical village achieved 100% from the Decent Life Initiative. But still, the challenge that's facing the, the Egyptian government is sanitation and providing clean water to all the villages all over the Upper Egypt, which is not a very easy thing to achieve in small time. But we, of course, through the three stages of the Decent Decent Life Initiative, we are aiming to have Al Masara all over the upper Egypt and all over the villages of Egypt in decreasing the developmental gap between uh, those villages and between the urban areas. Right. Uh, also, uh, in addition to upper Egypt, there are still in the agenda of uh, uh, Decent Life many other parts on the map um, which, are, which hold similar aspirations. If you like to elaborate. Yes, uh, of course, the agenda, not even of the Decent Life Initiative, but the agenda of the Egyptian government 2030 and sustainable development is very important to achieve. And this is uh, this goes parallel with the, the UN uh, aims and the sustainable development of the UN. And for this, uh, as I told you, the Decent Life Initiative is very uh, parallel with the aims of the UN. For this, the UN and the United, uh, the United Nations is praising uh, all the efforts of Decent Life Initiative. And uh, we are increasing even the efforts and implementing the Decent Life Initiative, not only in Egypt, but also for Africa. And we here we are exporting the policy, which is the top of the success for the Egyptian agenda. Right, you're very right. Uh, Egypt have retained its leading role, uh, not only uh, in the neighboring countries, but in the whole of Africa. And what Egypt is doing through voluntary work and uh, civil society is also doing for other uh, uh, African countries inside the continent who are in need for such help. But talk to us about the uh, idea of civil society and the idea of civil work and how important is it to share now in modern life and that was, uh, thanks to God, it was only initiated by President Abdel Fattah Sisi as the first Egyptian president to initiate the civil society as one of the important sectors on equal foot with the governmental sectors. Do you agree with me? 
Yes, of course, uh, I cannot agree more. Actually, President Abdel Fattah Sisi is the first president to uh, to make this collateral work between the private sector, between the civil uh, society, and between the government, making things and making the channels easy to communicate between the three parties. Also, uh, is very uh, uh, is encouraging youth to share <laughs> and to volunteer in Decent Life Initiative and all the presidential initiatives, not only the Decent Life, but also all the presidential initiatives. Right. They are opening the port to receive volunteers from the youth in all aspects of the work. Right. Uh, Ms. Marianne Gerg is uh, the journalist. I would like to thank you so much and you have a beautiful day. We're going to go to a short break and we'll come to continue the breakfast show, so stay with us.